Welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. I'm out here in my beautiful backyard, although it's awful windy today. I don't know how good this is going to all record. You can see the stretch of, stretch of country all the way out and around. Still a little bit of snow up here in these hills. Right over those mountains right there are the Grand Tetons, but you can't see them. Oh, I'm afraid it's going to be awful windy. I hope not. Anyway, I'm going to give this a shot. If nothing else, I can record this in my truck. See if I can get me so that, it, so that you can see me. Woohoo! Can you see me? Oh, man. I've got to stand way back here. You'll never hear me. Hang on. Holy cow. Let's see. Am I all the way out? Oh, that's part of the problem. A lot of birds out today, even though it is a windy, windy, windy day. Good afternoon. Hey, we've got beautiful weather here in Idaho right now, other than this blasted wind. Uh, an issue has come up that I believe it's time for me as the backyard professor to address, and I'll be more than happy to. Not a problem. It's concerning DNA in the Book of Mormon. Now, I know uh, Simon Southerton just has a brand new fresh study out that I will uh, be reading here shortly. Haven't read it yet. He just published it just a matter of a week ago, I think. And uh, Simon Southerton and Thomas Murphy, uh, the anthropologist, the LDS scientist who says, we have a problem with DNA in the Book of Mormon. And uh, the cold, brute, hard, bad fact is, we don't have a problem. Tom Murphy has a problem. I've noticed when critics are going to criticize the Book of Mormon, I've noticed that they do one of two things. They oversimplify the Book of Mormon, and they put too much faith in final answers in science. I love science. I love the fact that this DNA stuff is coming out now and giving us a chance to scrutinize our knowledge and understanding better of this magnificent world that we live in. But the fast, hard conclusions, those aren't allowed. We want to have conclusions, but DNA science has severe limitations that both Southerton and Murphy are completely underestimating, or else they're not even stating it to us. They oversimplify the Book of Mormon record, and they exaggerate the finality and conclusions of tentative science. Nothing is more tentative than DNA analysis of populations around this globe. In fact, it is physically impossible, based on the nature of the way DNA science works, it is physically impossible to find final conclusions on all matters. Brand new text out, 2007, Greg Colford Books out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Who are the children of Lehi? DNA in the Book of Mormon by Meldrum and Stephens. They have a wonderful analysis of two areas that our critics are having serious troubles with. Number one, the Book of Mormon, and number two, DNA science. <laughs> yes, that's the whole kip and caboodle right there. But uh, what I want to do is I want to explore some areas that Stephens and Meldrum uh, cover with both the Book of Mormon and DNA. If we're going to criticize the Book of Mormon, I have serious advice for you critics. You best understand the Book of Mormon, because you're up against thousands of LDS scholars and apologists who are scrutinized the Book of Mormon every day. We are going through it with a fine-tooth comb also. And if, as Thomas Murphy and Simon Southerton do, if you oversimplify the Book of Mormon in order to get an argument to stick against it, we will catch you. I promise. You're not going to get away with it, man. There's, 
You can't. There's too many of us who take it seriously. Look, we have living prophets for the last hundred years who have been telling us, hey people, read the Book of Mormon. Understand the Book of Mormon. And there's several of us who are taking those prophets seriously, and we're taking the Book of Mormon seriously. So, critics, if you're not going to want to embarrass yourselves, you better start taking the Book of Mormon a little bit more seriously. I know you don't believe in it. That's fine. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm saying if you're going to come up with an argument against it, you better have the analysis of what it says and what it doesn't say. You had better have that down pretty cold. Because we LDS people are getting there. We're understanding things a lot clearer than we used to. So you critics best take a word of a heed of warning. You be careful when you're criticizing the Book of Mormon. Because if you have weaknesses, I promise you, we LDS, we will, I repeat, we will find your weaknesses. And I believe uh, Meldrum and Stephens has found your weaknesses, and they have discussed those weaknesses in this text. Hey, there's some neighbors. They have discussed those weaknesses in this text, and so I want to highlight some of the ideas and the interpretations. I'm going to begin with the Book of Mormon. Hey, unfortunately, this is YouTube. I'm stuck with about eight to ten minute videos just like you are. So I'm going to have to do a series of videos because this is going to take a lot more than just one ten minute video to show you the proper context of the Book of Mormon Lamanite. Simon Southerton, you and Thomas Murphy, neither one of you do that for us. You do not explore the full context of the Book of Mormon peoples as a culture, nor as a genetic lineage. And the Book of Mormon actually has an enormous amount of evidence and information about it, of what it says. These guys thrash you, and I'm going to review their findings. So, come along with me on this adventure. I suspect it could be 10, 15 videos in this series eventually. I think five or six or seven of them is going to cover just the Book of Mormon. And then the second half on DNA science will cover the, uh, the scientific aspects and some of the serious limitations that DNA has. Not because we apologists and scholars of the LDS faith are so desperate to find an argument for the sinking ship of the Book of Mormon. Get real. It is the nature of the science itself I will be exploring. That's what I'm going to be talking about. If you don't approach science realistically, and you don't approach the Book of Mormon realistically, your conclusions are going to be unrealistic. That is a cold, hard fact. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. So, I'm going to explore this DNA in the Book of Mormon, and I'm going to finally show you that all of the arguments against the Book of Mormon using DNA, the final conclusion is simply false. The Book of Mormon stands up very well under serious, close, scholarly analysis and scrutiny. The claim that the Book of Mormon has been proven false through DNA, that claim is simply false.